Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie. Welcome back to a new video in the man cave. And today I'm guessing we're doing like that whole sort of annual Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection update, as I usually do from time to time. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and flip the screen like so. And here you can see the collection as it is now. I essentially have these three Billy bookshelves, which you can see in the middle, and these are all Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original film from 1974 by Toby Hooper. I have been making videos about this for quite a while, so it is quite an extensive collection. I can't really remember the year I started, if it was like 2008 or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like now. And I did some rearranging from uh, the last video I did to this, which is, you know, having some spines and then some covers and sort of interchanging it like that which you know i gotta say i much prefer because it certainly creates a feeling of just how many uh, variations there are like if i just had like a row of spines here you wouldn't be seeing all of these so it's not sometimes there's a space behind there i try to fill it out to make it look you know as filled as possible um, there's some tape behind here which I mean, you've seen most of these and I, I make updates regularly, so I'm not gonna bother with moving that 8mm television out of the way. So yeah, this is the setup right now. And of course, I also have my drawers down here, which uh, basically holds all of the DVDs and Blu-rays. So there's three drawers like this. Oh yeah, this is also, I forgot about that. Just move that out of the way, okay. So yeah, more DVDs and then there's even more in the last drawer there but i'm not gonna take that out just for the sake of it so let's close that up and so now i just want to show you basically the stuff that's new and so the first thing is actually something i completely forgot that i picked up and i really don't know much about this but i think it's essentially like a dust cover or some kind of thing which you use for a vinyl record player. So that's where there's the hole in the middle you're supposed to place this. I don't know what they're called, like it's, it's a vinyl mat or something, but you basically put them like on the record player, I guessing to cover it up when you're not using it so you don't get dust or stuff on the deck. I have no idea the purpose or you know technology behind it, but that's essentially what it's for. Uh, you're supposed to place this over your uh, record player deck. So that's what there's a small hole in the middle. And I wasn't really looking for this because it's not really part of my sort of... I tend to mainly collect uh, videotapes and DVDs and media, so to speak, and not so much memorabilia, if you will. But I got that as part of a deal, so I figured I might as well. Next up is something quite interesting. Oh god, how am I gonna summarize this? Okay, so back in the 1980s, here in Sweden, there was a big sort of debate on television and in the media about video violence. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film was very much the central part of that. It was sort of believed that the youth of the time would be very badly influenced by all the violence uh, that was appearing in movies. This being the day and the new age of sort of video rentals. It was sort of commonly believed that everything that kids were doing was, you know, going out to rent videotapes and they rented all of these horror movies and they would get very sort of desensitized and essentially end up becoming rapists or violent criminals or whatever. That was sort of like the general consensus. It was a very strange time. So based on this, there was this centralized bureau which was given the task of pre-censoring all the movies before they were distributed in the cinema. They also had like the same sort of assignment but for videotapes as well, which was essentially called the Staten's Biograf Bureau or the Cinematic Bureau of the State, I guess you would translate it to. So the way it works is that if you wanted to import a film and have it screened in theaters, you would have to submit your movie to the Bureau and then they would determine if the film could be released uncut or if it had to be censored or in worst case scenario that it would be rejected, meaning that it would not be allowed to be shown. And for the Sexy Chainsaw Massacre, you know, this is quite legendary to anyone who is a Swede. They actually rejected the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and said that this is not allowed 
to be screened in cinemas. So the film was banned back in the 1980s. So this is a copy of the original rejection card, which basically specified like all of the details about the films. This is obviously all in Swedish, but just to sort of give you some idea. And if you flip it over, there is sort of like the basic plot line. A film about a group of hitchhiking or road tripping teens who end up in a small town on the American countryside where they are submitted to violence in a house which is populated by maniacs directed by Toby Hooper. And so this is not an original card because there's only one original card that would be incredibly cool if I actually got that. But no, this is a replica card. It's printed on sturdy cardboard and it has a color print and this was a limited edition card which was produced for this 45th anniversary screening of the film which was held at a theater here in Sweden which was called Capital and uh, I had no idea I mean I know there was going to be a screening of the film but I mean I've seen it in the theaters before and I just didn't have time to go but then one of my friends who went to the screening posted a picture on Instagram of this card and I'm like what the fuck is this and so I contacted her and she explained to me that these cards were handed out sort of randomly like we have some replica cards does anybody want one and people just sort of ran up there and and you know first come first serve and she was lucky enough to get one you know knowing about my fascination with this film she just sent this to me for free uh, which was such a uh, heartwarming gesture. I'm um, absolutely in awe and this is such a cool find. Just a super huge thank you to Martina who was kind enough to send this to me. I don't know what to say, it's just an irreplaceable piece to me. And um, I actually contacted the sort of city archive or whatever who uh, essentially produced these and replicated them uh, and asked about it and they confirmed to me that it was actually like just 15 cards and they didn't really expect them to be so popular. And I mean, seeing as this was like a one-time screening, there's like no real plan to sort of replicate this again, I suppose. So yeah, this is definitely a, a really cool find, which I will value for many, many years. But let's just move on to the next item. And this is something I got just yesterday and I wasn't really planning to include it in this update, but it would be kind of fun. So this is obviously not the original Texas Chainsaw film, but it's a film which is somewhat related to it. And it is Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers starring, uh, you know, Gunnar Hansen, obviously from Texas Chainsaw fame. And uh, I have never actually seen this film, but uh, I'm not going to show you the back because, I mean, it's a limited edition of 500 copies made in Germany or Austria. I can't remember now, but um, it's got some nipples on the back, so I didn't want to flip over to show you the back. But yeah, I got this as a late birthday present from my friend Stefan, aka Mystifo, who you probably know if you are a diehard fan of this channel. So I just wanted to mention this because I think it's uh, sort of related to the Texas Chainsaw, but yeah, obviously not. The original film. So yeah, get on to the actual Texas Chainsaw releases. And first up we have a VCD edition, a video CD. This is like a jewel case which comes in a cardboard sleeve and this is a Hong Kong edition or a Chinese edition. Quite low quality on the paper sleeve. It is an incredibly tight fit so it was actually quite impossible to get the a jewel case out. It sort of took me like 10 minutes just to get it out of there without damaging anything. It's released by a company called Evergreen. I don't even know if you can focus on that, but there it is. So uh, that's one in the bag. Then we got a bootleg CD soundtrack, which, uh, you know, there's really no official soundtrack out there, I just want to say. And I mean, you can look closely at sort of like the print on this you can see that the quality of the print is absolutely terrible. It is described as uh, manufactured by Falling Mountain Music, which I've never heard of. And it also says for promotional use only of the producers. I mean, even like the grammar on this is terrible. So yeah, this is uh, definitely a bootleg. It's not an official soundtrack because there is no official soundtrack. And looking at like the disc, you can see that promotional use only is just bullshit. Um, but yeah, still sort of fun to have. And I also got that as part of a loft when I purchased a bunch of other stuff. Here is a newer release. This is a brand new German release from Turbine, a really great company, which has released a ton of cool releases of this film in the past. This is part of their new sort of retro line, which has a 
slip case. Oh god, this is really dodgy reviewing, or I should say dangerous. So this is just a VHS style replication. It's actually a cardboard case, but it looks pretty cool. You've probably seen similar stuff. It's essentially started with the Stranger Things, which got a very sort of similar box set released in America. And so it was like a Best Buy exclusive and stuff. This is from Germany and they've essentially started making a ton of these. Like it's a whole series, they made one for Texas Chainsaw, they're making one for like all the other Texas Chainsaw films, like the original four movies or whatever. I just picked this one up because, I, you know, I basically just collect the original film, so that's why I wanted that. But quite a cool release, I like what they're doing. But it's also a very sort of, you know, milking out all the money out of a project. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's a fun design, but geez, are you gonna make it for like every film? It would be cooler if they just made it for like some instead of, you know, producing like a whole line of it. But then again, I mean, who am I to talk? I mean, I, I love my sort of retro style of VHS editions. So yeah, let's just move on, shall we? This next one is absolutely awesome. This is like, I think the only copy I've seen, and I got it from another collector. This is a Mexican Betamax copy. You can see, I actually put a protective plastic on it because it's quite bad shape, as you can see. Some slight liquid damage to it. And also, you know, like it's been taped up with clear tape and it's just, it's not in very good shape. But given the age and given that this is so rare, I absolutely love it and not taking the tape out so if you want to see detailed pics of this you can just look at my instagram account which is tcmdb the texas chainsaw massacre database i think i posted a pic of this tape there uh, in case you want to see it so yeah but really cool release definitely one of a kind so really glad to have that um why am i showing this this is not new. Sorry, I don't think this should be here. I must have placed it here by accident. This is an old bootleg, which I'm pretty sure I've shown, so I don't know why it ended up in this pile. But yeah, it's just a VHS, got a really bizarre green cover. It's just a homemade bootleg, meant to look like a release from Vipgo, but it's actually got the wrong spine number, and the release from Vipgo is essentially printed in sort of a goldish style brown, whereas this is... I don't know, it's really fucked up bootleg. Let's just forget about that. I wasn't even gonna show it. I don't know why it ended up here. I was rearranging stuff. Let's see. Here's another VCD. Also like a Chinese release, as far as I remember, or Hong Kong release. Put out by a company called Starry Video Entertainment. I don't know if you can see the logo there. And there we got the back cover. This is also like all of these VCDs tend to be like two disc releases. So sort of look like that and then you flip this open and there's like a disc on the other side. But like once again, if you want to see detailed charts, you can just check the Instagram. A second to last here, we got the... Jesus Christ, where is this from? I think it's Polish. Sorry that I'm not very well read right now. Yeah, it looks Polish. So anyway, here we got a Polish DVD edition which comes a keep case and a slip case. So it's got the same artwork on the interior. But in any case, here is just a quick look at the back. So quite a classic sort of artwork on this, but I don't have a lot of Polish editions. I think there's essentially like only two DVD releases out there. And this is the one of the few that I've seen, which actually comes in real case. The other one I have is just like a cardboard slip, like it's a flat, just a, you know, flat case. It's not even a keep case or a thick case, it's just like a flat sleeve. And... Oh yeah, last one here. This is a bootleg tape from a uh, Japanese guy who goes by the name Terror Factory. And you can check out his Instagram account. He's also on Facebook. And I think he sort of prints t-shirts and sells custom t-shirts. Obviously a really big fan of the movie and a big fan of the VHS format. So he essentially made a sort of one-off mock-up case. I don't even think this actually has the film on it. I think it's just a mock-up case you know he tends to do designs like this just based on the name or the alias terror factory but for like classic movies sort of like presenting these classic films so it's not like it's, it's just a bit of tape in there 
so there you get the overall design. But yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this is like one copy only because he tends to just make these for himself. He did send me another VHS in the past, which is right over here. You can just see this doesn't have a tape in it. I just got this as a VHS insert and then I found a case for it. But this is like the kind of stuff that he does, sort of making his own designs. So this is very much a bootleg, but I saw this a long time ago when he first posted it. And then I forgot about it. And then one of my collector friends was selling off his collection and I bought like a big lot of various editions that I was missing. And this is one of the tapes which he had, which I felt like, you know, yeah, I would definitely want this. So I ended up picking up this copy from him. So it didn't actually come from Terror Factory. But still really glad to get this because I always wanted this copy when I first saw it. But I, you know, didn't get around to buying it. But, um, yeah. I realized that I actually have some more editions which I've sort of misplaced now. Because it's a fucking mess when I sort of reorganized this. But I do have some old footage where I'm showing those missing releases. Which were supposed to be part of this update. So let me just flip over to that. I suppose the first thing we can look at is this highly questionable and quite unidentifiable copy which is actually on video 2000. Now I have not been able to find out anything about this. I bought this as a tape only from another collector. It certainly looks like it could be like an official, like a rental copy or something that belongs in an official case, but I mean even, you know, with the help of other collectors and stuff, I have not been able to figure out what cover this belongs to. I don't know where the cassette came from, and I don't have a Video 2000 player to play it, so I can't really, you know, derive anything from subtitles or pre-credits or whatever. But still very cool to have, because, you know, it's not a very common film to own on Video 2000, so really happy about this. Anyway, my planning is poor as shit. One of the other things I picked up, this is a VHS from France. I have this cover variation already, but I don't have this particular audio dub of the film. They essentially released it both with the French audio and with the original uh, English audio track or American. So I forget which one this is, if it's the French or the English, but it's the it's version I didn't have essentially. So quite happy to add that to the collection. This is quite a rare release to begin with. This is one of the earlier versions. It's actually from 1980, which is quite early in terms of videotapes. So really happy to add that as well. Next up, we got another one, which you've probably seen before, at least this cover variation. This is the Certificate X version, which is much more unusual than the uncensored variation which comes with the same cover and just has the differing censorship print on it. It says uncensored instead of saying Certificate of X. So yeah, and here is the Certex. It's actually a Betamax, which is one of the formats I was missing. I essentially had Certex on VHS already, but definitely wanted to get it on Betamax now that I was able to. Next up we got one which is quite common, so quite surprising that I didn't have this. This is the regular American Blu-ray. The ugliest cover in existence when you look at the poor sort of effects job they did on cloning Leatherface's face onto a wrong body. It's just, oh god, how I hate this cover. Comes with a cardboard slip case and then you got the same cover on the keep case, so I'm not gonna pull that out. Now, next up we got one which uh, is censoring a little bit, even though I don't know it's important. This is obviously not the original film, but this is another ad to my collection of Texas Chainsaw Massacre porn spoofs. It's called the Texas Vibrator Massacre. It was directed by Rob Rotten. And in Spain, apparently, this is a Spanish DVD edition, it was actually called La Matanza de Texas version X. So yeah, it is. I mean, La Matanza de Texas is essentially the official title of the original film uh, by Toby Hooper. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure hoping that nobody picks this up thinking like, oh, it's the uh, version X. I mean, to me, version X sounds like it might as well be like, oh, it's the uncensored version or something. And then you sort of buy this and you're like, oh, I can't actually show you the back cover because it is actually quite uh, explicit. But yeah, another copy of the porn versions. So let's just go ahead and try to, how the hell do I do this? Like so, oh, you didn't see anything, did you? No nipples here, okay. And last but not least, we got another copy and here you can actually see the official Spanish title, which is La Matanza de Texas, like I said. And this is 
one version which I have. It is a early one from a company called Video Gala. It is quite a classic version, but this is actually a Betamax and it even comes in the original Video Gala clamshell. But here you can see this is a Betamax and I didn't have a Betamax from Spain before, so it's been something I've had on my wish list for quite a while. So in any case, that is essentially it for this video. I try to make these videos as often as I feel that it's warranted, like, you know, when I've accumulated a certain amount of new releases of the film. I would love to know what you think, you know, it's always fun to hear, you know, especially on Instagram and stuff, you know, people leaving likes for whenever I post stuff about the Text Chains Massacre. I mean, I've been doing this for quite a long time now, I think I'm up to like it's roughly 300 unique copies of the film uh, from all over the world so uh, yeah just want to say that i love all the support you're giving me and uh, i'm probably gonna keep collecting this film till the day i die i suppose i've seen a lot of uh, sort of hardcore collectors who um, i have a lot of contact with over the years who have essentially stopped collecting and are selling off their collection so i don't know if i'm going to be like the last guy standing or whatever but uh, yeah, I want to say thank you very much for watching and as usual, hope to see you all next time.